what Norman Cornish was over the decades that he was painting was a chronicler of a world that really within one or two generations has disappeared from within the UK and, and to some degree the Western world. It was a world where men would walk miles to go to work in all weathers, six days a week. They would go to the pub of an evening, their wives would stay home, their feet would stick to the carpet in the pub. You could cut the smoke with a, with a knife. I grew up in, in the northwest of, of England in the 70s and it's a world that I recognise, but certainly my children now wouldn't recognise at all. And I think what makes Norman important as a national artist is that he was, as I say, a chronicler, a recorder of that, of that world that really has, has, has disappeared now. My father had a strong connection with the community. He wasn't an outsider looking in. He was part of the working community and um, understood that community. So he was able to paint and draw that world exactly how it was. And you, you see through his sketches and his paintings, you see the working environment, a tough working environment, above ground, below ground. You see the community socialising in the pubs, which were an entirely different type of pub to what we see now. We see family life, we see street life, people just going about the business. And I guess it's a slice of life. It's a slice of life from the, from the early and mid 20th century. That, um, that was my father's world. My father was obliged to leave school at 14 and become a miner. A year later, he joined the sketching club at the Spennymoor Settlement, a very important place um, for cultural enlightenment. Uh, in a socially deprived area. So as a 15 year old, that was the point at which he was given direction to paint the life that he knew. The jump to become a professional artist 33 years later was quite a difficult one for him, because that wouldn't have you know, necessarily uh, put food on the table for a young family. So it was my mother, Sarah, who really gave him the, a push and said, you know, if you don't go down and hand your notice in, I, I will, you know? So, so she was quite instrumental, she was the rock uh, behind my father's success, really. As a family, we don't really have many um, photographs, um, but it's not important because we have lots and lots of sketches of family life. So we have John reading a comic, Anne combing her hair, John in the bath, the tin bath from the backyard, or occasionally in the sink, believe it or not. And um, mother peeling potatoes, working, cleaning, etc., etc., and they're all beautiful sketches. And um, and I don't remember much of the time having to stop and hold that pose and just stay, stay there, so on. But it must have happened an awful lot because we have so many beautiful family sketches of life at Bishop's Close Street. Most of the time, I guess, he was working upstairs in his studio working on larger paintings and oils. He spent hours up there, coming down for the odd break for meals and such like. But a lot of the time he'd be out sketching with his companion, a floor master pen. And that's how I remember him. I remember him as the master of the rapid sketch. He could catch a, a moment in time in a few seconds. The floor master pen was a way of getting ink rapidly onto a page. He could work on fine lines up to a thick ball line with this particular pen. and. I remember him working very rapidly and so you would maybe in a pub he'd see somebody moving in a certain position and he would have that done in seconds. I don't think any of his sketches were poor sketches and that's clear when you look at them. Everything was unguarded. Oh there we are, the convivial conversation, the bridge between minds. Oh, and the piano singer in the pub back in the days. My dad was a very intellectual guy and he could also go into a pub and talk with his workmates with the local vernacular and just mix in absolutely fine. So he'd go to a pub and he'd take his sketchbook out, he'd be sat in the corner and he'd, away he'd go and start sketching. And people would say, oh, it's just that, just normally sketching again. So nobody would say, what's going on here? So everything was very unguarded, nothing paused. And everybody accepted him as part of the wallpaper, I guess. My father was fascinated by people and he was fascinated by the shapes that people made. In his sketchbooks there would be fairly large compositions but in amongst those pages there would be lots of little character sketches. My dad also took out a 35mm camera and took lots and lots of slides, basically for reference, 
things that interested him, just street scenes and characters walking down the street, all sorts of different things. And often would have them beamed onto a wall so he could actually use them as a template to start his drawings. They are just like my father's pictures, an interesting window into that particular town at that time of the century. My dad loved drawing children. When they used to spill out of school, um, a few hundred yards down the road was the zebra crossing. It's one of the few drawings where we see a picture with a car in it. My dad didn't like the fact that the streets are full of cars and not people anymore and kids couldn't play out. So uh, it's one of the few occasions there's ever crossing where there's the odd car thrown in. Then we have Eddie's chip shop. Most of it isn't there now, but it was just an ordinary chip shop in the corner of the street. And it just draws you in. It becomes extraordinary. You can almost smell the fish and chips in a newspaper with lashings of vinegar. It just draws you in and that's how people respond to my dad's, uh, my dad's artwork. The pit road is a theme that many collectors of my father's work are looking for. It resonates with them. And even though the pit road itself is virtually white off the landscape, it was a road he trod three miles there and after work three miles back for 30 years. And um, he must have done a lot of thinking on that road. He used to like the way the, the lights in the pit and the town in the background were, were echoed by the starry night. And he used to draw weary characters on the pit road, very often characters going to work looking quite down and glum. And occasionally, coming back from work, they have a little bit of a stride in the step, though very weary. So I think he did a lot of thinking on that pit road, and he drew it over and over again. But it was just a road with a, a pit in the background, and yet it draws people in. My father never sought fame or fortune. He wasn't driven by money or fame at all. I think he knew his work was exceptional. He never would ever say that. He, he would never brag about his work, but what he wanted, he, did, he didn't want to be remembered, but he wanted his work to, to stand the test of time. And I think he thought it would. Norman had tremendous success during his, his lifetime, at a time when British art was venturing into abstraction and, and other forms, other experimental forms of work. Norman almost stands alone over those decades as the, as the person that really on a national context was capturing what was, what was happening around him. And through incredible art, he's given us that insight and that record. And I think that's Norman's legacy. I think historians and sociologists will be able to look back at a sort of early, mid 20th century industrial town. They've got to look back and understand what it was like to live and, and work and you know, socialise in that period of time. So I think it'll stand the test of time for that reason, as well as for the, simply for the quality of the artwork.